nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Accurate precision. Shoot, can you believe it? We've made it to our last video. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, huh? Can you believe we did these all in the same afternoon? Well, we're not totally done yet, but yeah, I guess. Are you ready? Uh, okay. Let's go! Nuclear chemistry key concept one. Some nuclei are unstable due to their neutron to proton ratios. All nuclei with atomic numbers greater than 82 are unstable. When we are trying to determine the stability of a nucleus, we look at the neutron to proton ratio. For lighter elements, a one to one neutron to proton ratio tends to be very stable. However, for heavier elements, we need to have a higher neutron to proton ratio, which means more neutrons than protons. In the periodic table shown, we have all unstable nuclei shown in dark red. Nuclear chemistry key concept two. Radioactive decay emissions have different masses, charges, and penetrating powers. Gamma rays are the most penetrating, followed by beta particles, and alpha particles are the least penetrating. Now to take a look at these different particles, we go to table O. The notations are listed, and in the upper left we have the mass, and in the lower left, we have the charge. Now the penetrating power of each of the three main nuclear emissions is shown in the diagram. Alpha particles are blocked by a simple sheet of paper. Beta particles will go through that sheet of paper, but would be stopped by aluminum. Gamma radiation will go through both of those, and it takes very thick lead to stop gamma radiation. Nuclear chemistry, key concept three. When nuclei decay, they emit alpha, beta, positron and or gamma radiation at a specific rate called half-life. Table N is a very useful table here. Table N shows various radioisotopes. It gives their half-lives, which is an amount of time, and it also gives the decay mode. When doing a half-life problem, we need to make sure that we take into account that half-life. In our example problem, we take the total time, we divide it by the time for one half-life, and we get the number of half-lives that have occurred. We then take the initial sample mass and we divide it in half the number of half-lives, in this case, three. When we divide 100 in half three times, we get 12.5 grams that remain at the end. Nuclear chemistry key concept four. Unstable nuclei decay by alpha, beta, or positron decay until they reach stable neutron to proton ratios. Now you gotta remember that unstable nuclei will emit both particles and energy until they reach a stable ratio of neutrons to protons. Now for example, uranium has many steps on the way down to lead 206 before it's stable. Nuclear chemistry key concept five. The change of an atom from one element to another is called transmutation. Transmutations may be natural or artificial. In natural transmutation, we see one nucleus on the left breaking down, turning into a new nucleus, and giving off particles and energy. In artificial transmutation, we see a nucleus, but another particle is being bombarded at that nucleus. That's how it's done artificially. We then make another new nucleus, and other particles are often still given off. Nuclear chemistry key concept six. Equations can be written to show transmutations. In all nuclear equations, there will be changes in the atomic numbers and the mass numbers of the reactants and products. In our example here, we have the decay of uranium-238. The 238 is the mass number of uranium. The mass number has to be the same on both sides of your equation. So 238 on the left has to be 238 on the right. Thorium-234 plus four is 238. The atomic number of 92 for uranium has to also be there on the right, so the 90 for thorium and the two for the alpha particle equals 92. Nuclear chemistry, key concept seven. 
Fission and fusion are artificial transmutations that emit large amounts of energy caused by the conversion of matter into energy. The energy released during these processes is much greater than that released by ordinary chemical reaction. In a fission reaction, we have a heavy nucleus that is split into smaller nuclei. A tremendous amount of energy is released in the process. In fusion, we have very small nuclei coming together to make a single nucleus. This also releases a tremendous amount of energy. So why do nuclear reactions release so much more energy than chemical? It's because if we look at the equation equals mc squared, matter can be converted directly into energy. Nuclear chemistry key concept eight. Both fission and fusion have benefits and risks. The benefits are the tremendous amount of energy that you produce from the small amount of fuel that it actually takes. Some of the risks are determining the long-term storage solutions to the radioactive waste and the possibility for nuclear weapons. Nuclear chemistry, key concept nine. Radioisotopes have many uses. Cobalt is not only used for cancer treatment, it's also used to irradiate food to kill bacteria in it. Iodine is used for diagnosing thyroid disorders. Carbon is used for carbon dating, which is determining the age of once living things and uranium is used for dating geological formations. Rolling. As a... Uh, sorry. Was that clear? Um, that's that's on video, just so... My mom's Get it together, boo! All right, what is it? Nah, physical nah, behavior nah, nah, matter. Let's matter. get physical, physical. physical. That's how you're gonna behavior go. of matter. 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 Short. Oh yeah, they should, they should all be really stupid. Okay, perfect. I like stupid and quick. <laughs> Spain! <laughs> Y'all better know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. No. No, 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 no. What is that? No, no, what is, no, no. What even is that? Wait, I can just go. Boop. Wow. However the Holy Spirit moves here. Okay. Outermost shell. I just blanked. Seriously just blanked. Alright, I'm starting out with some barf. Should I go? I mixed up my articles. How many? Cannonball! Ah! Oh, good activation energy! Oh, I'm so nervous! That was good. I still don't like that take. Where? Where? <laughs> no, but that definitely gets the blood flowing. The molarity of OH minus. And VB is the volume of the base. Got it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I you got to really scrub the last it. word. If we go in our reference tables to table O. <laughs> <laughs> I just started to smile too. Oh, wait. Was that take one? That doesn't matter. I think this is take two. <laughs> I'm not going to get it right this time anyway. Right. You're not. Table O. Nothing funny about table no. O. It's not table bro O. This is the atomic mass. Why did I say atomic mass? <laughs> there is one more thing. It's been emotional. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. Uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. Uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.